Hi guys, nothing to prove here. Today's a beautiful day because any day one can be out and about on two wheels is a gorgeous, wonderful day. Today, as you can see, I ride the Triumph Tiger 800. Back in 1936 was the first year that Triumph attached that Tiger name to a model. So it's the oldest adventure, but yet it's not the king of the adventure group, the Tigers. We all know who that is the GS's, but in 2018, Triumph said, hey, let's see if we can uh, try to usurp that throne. They have put in over 200 updates, refinements, changes to this bike, 100 of which are just in the engine alone. Lighter crank, spins up easier, shorter first gear. Uh, and if you get this model, the XRT, the aero can comes stock right from the factory and the sound is good. I love it. I like that Triumph. Good sound. But now let's see if these changes are enough to get Triumph up there to where it can hit with the middle, the other middleweights in this group. When the 800 was launched in 2010, till now, they've had over 68,000 in sales, which is not bad, not bad at all, that's good. Triumph wants more. Triumph wants more sales in this middleweight category, and this is proof. Who gets to benefit? Us, the riders. <laughs> so, let's go over some of these refinements, changes, etc. I hope you stick around and enjoy the ride. All right, guys, you know I like to do a ride by in all my videos, so let's take a look. This is shot in 60 frames, slowed way down to 24 frames. This is so that you can see what I look like on the bike. I'm 5'10", about 176 centimeters, uh, 82 kilos, 180 pounds. Uh, actually, the ergonomics are almost perfect for my height. Uh, also, you can get different seat heights with this. This is the 830 millimeter, which fit me perfect. I can flat foot it. I have a 32 inch inseam, so if you guys are wondering, if you have a 32 inch inseam, the 830 millimeter, perfect. This will go all the way down to 810 millimeters, this seat. Uh, it's adjustable, and if you get the, the XR, X model with the low version, it'll go all the way down to 760 to 780 millimeters. That's pretty, pretty low. So it'll accommodate you shorter riders also, which is great. Thanks for doing that triumph. Okay, guys, it's my favorite part of the video when we get up close and personal with this bike with the hand held on the gimbal. So let's start out with the most important thing, over 100 updates to this motor. Well, let's, let me get around to that side and let's switch over to the handheld. There we go. As I step back, nice shot of the bike coming in here to the motor. Yeah, this is where they did 100 updates. They shortened first gear a little bit uh, and also made the crank lighter so it spins up quicker. And yes, I did notice that difference. I did notice it on this model. Very good job with that. Nothing but thumbs up for me on the motor updates here, Triumph. And this is the original 675 motor. It's just bored and stroked. That's what they did with this. And I do like the aluminum uh, protection here. And also there, the radiator guard there and there. That's nice with this XRT model. And one thing I want to point out is, yeah, if you get the XRT, it comes with this. Sound is excellent here. Let's go ahead and start her up. I need, I have to set the gimbal down in order to start her up because with Triumph, you know, you have to pull in the clutch. So let's turn the ignition on. Give it a second to, to uh, <laughs> for the display to come on. Pull in the clutch. Should start. There we go. Now. Let's, let's listen to this, listen to that bass, I love that, 
for an 800cc motor, that sounds pretty good. Well, it's a triple. Now it's got that traditional whine. Let's do this. Oh. You're in stereo here. The whine of the motor and the bass of the exhaust. Sounds good, Triumph. Good job with that. All right, let's crank her down there. And off. There we go. All right. Good sound, Triumph. I like it. Whatever it is you did to that, good. The, the triple whine, if you guys like that, <laughs> it's still there with more exhaust note. Sounds really good. Okay, let's continue on in here. Now, let's get over to the front suspension. These are your 40, 43 millimeter Showa's, fully adjustable there and on the other side too for preload, uh, rebound, and dampening. Uh, and uh, 180 millimeters of travel down here. And uh, we have 305 millimeter floating discs, dual. And yes, you can see there, Brembo's. Two piston though. See, if you look at the other side, oops, I hit the back. You can see there that there's no, that it's not four pistons. Those are empty. So they have two pistons, uh, Brembo's there. I, and, and also it's not a monoblock. They're floating. But it's so they're not as strong and you don't get as much uh, grip strength, if you will. Uh, with the brakes when they're when they're floating like this, but you, I, I liked the feedback You get a little more feedback than with a mono block Brembo Mono meaning one solid piece. These are two these are floating So I did like the feedback you gave me with the front brake here on this bike now the rear again Showa and I thought it was funny if you look right into there right here you can see how they've extended that out so that you can get in there with a screwdriver to adjust the preload on the rear. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, and on the rear, the Nissan 255 disc, millimeter disc, and, and a single piston Nissan floating in the rear. Now, why did they go from Brembo's in the front to Nissan in the rear? I don't know. Uh, yeah, and this model, the XR uh, uh, T, comes with a center stand, as you can see there. Okay, let's go back to the tires. It's it, it, to the, I was going to say let's go back to the front, but the rear is is a uh, uh, 150, 17, and the front is a 19 inch, but it's only a 100 millimeter wide tire, not a 110, not a 120. It's a 100. You'll notice that a lot of adventures are still 110, and if they go bigger like to a 21 inch and say like the 850 GS it'll be a, it'll be a uh, 90 wide so this it seems like Triumph was compromising here and trying to hit the middle road not going all the way down to a 90 and not go up to a 110 so they stuck it at a at a 100 millimeter wide front 19 inch front tire so and I did notice um, in on the ride up here that you can ride this bike aggressively on the street i did appreciate that good job triumph um stock all leds front and back oh and and before i talk about the windshield look at this beak you'll notice that on the xc x and the xca it's a longer beak and more suspension travel here is the shorter beak I like this shorter beak that Triumph did here with this. I just wanted to point that out. And also new for 2018, the new wind diffusers here on this side. It helps deflect more wind. And I do like this windscreen here. You can see right in there, there's, there's five positions. It's in the lowest, one, two, three, four, five. All you do is pull it out and pull up, and now it's all the way in the top. You can do this on the fly, on the road. I love that. Good job, Triumph. So if you want it in the middle there, you just pull out, push down, done. Good job, Triumph, on the, on the simple windscreen. It's like the Super Duke GT. Perfectly simple. Don't have to do anything. You can do it with one hand. I love that. And you guys know I like to do a flyover from the rear so that you can see the size of this bike and how big it is. It's only a triple, uh, but uh, it does look a little wide but uh, it's not too bad for an 800 as we come over I love the detailing here that they're doing with this seat for example here 
oh look at this this metallic this metallic flaking here in the tank and yes raised numbers there i love the the raised lettering there oh beautiful triumph yeah that's a sticker there but yeah um and, and you see it here but i i don't it's it's all open in here i don't know why they did that they kind of it's kind of almost an unfinished look i i still like it but for the money that you're paying uh, to get into this model you're talking 14 grand so that's a lot of money um let's go over here uh, totally adjustable clutch and brake levers uh, then we have our daytime running lights, nighttime cruise, uh, heated grips. Uh, here's your heated seat there, and then your push to pass, high lows, and so on. Um, then you have your left right turn signals, and then horn. And then I'm going to talk about this in a minute. Your this is your your five position joystick, and also this is how you get into your maps. We'll do that in a second. Let's go over to the other side. Okay, kill switch, start, uh, four-way emergencies, and also, again, for the menu. We'll talk about that. Well, let's just do it now. Let's just get right into it. I'm only going to spend about 30 seconds on the displays. So let's have it come up here. Um, only a couple of things I, I like. I, you can change. The, there are three skin options on here. I'm on number two skin option. So all I'm doing is moving with my thumb here, and then I'll select it, number one, and it changes to there. And I can hit down number two, and then here's option number three. Hit, then I press in, and then there I'm on number three. I think I like number two the best. There, we'll stick there. Uh, then you can press the M button here. This is your engine mapping. So as soon as you press it there, you can see that they come up here. That you can change in between your five mapping modes here: your sport, uh, street, rain, off-road, etc. I'm just going to leave it on sport. I liked it. It was good. Then you can change over here, push this, and you can see that it changes. Then you can get into your menu options to where you can do your writing modes. You can also do user configurable, motor, uh, your setup, board computers, display setup, how you want to see things, and so on. And then you just press it again, and you go back out. And you can see here, I'm on sport, time, temp, fuel, and so on. Um, there. Now, that's all I'm going to do. <laughs> In the past, I've spent way too much time on the displays. Um, the mirrors worked great. Not vibey, nothing. Very good job with the mirrors, Triumph. 80% uh, of the mirror is actually usable. The rest you just see a little bit uh, in your shoulders, just in close in. But especially this down part here, where it comes down, you can really see behind you. That's really nice. And up here... I like that design. Good mirrors, Triumph. Okay, that's the walk around and uh, some of the other uh, numbers. This is a 202 kilo dry, so you put gas in it. You're you're pushing. You're just over 216 kilos of weight, which is good job, Triumph. Here, weight is everything to me. Two thumbs up on the weight and the seat heights and the aeronomics. Good job. I can't say good job enough, Triumph. 216 kilos, yeah, you're beating everybody in this category. Now, with that weight, well, almost everybody, okay? But, but your premium lines, like your, your 1090, your, your, your two 750 and 850 GSs, uh, this is lower than those. Good job, Triumph. Like it, appreciate it. Because uh, I'm all about weight especially when you say adventure and off-road as soon as or, or sport bike Th those are the two major criticisms i have with adventure bikes and sport bikes are weight if you can produce a bike and compete with your competitors and make a lighter bike even if it's just five or ten kilos it matters so good job triumph can't say that enough all right now Let's get on the, on the road, and I'll spend a kilometer or two going down the trail talking about the three pillars of motorcycling that I said, the powertrain, the chassis, and aerodynamics. All right, let me get around and gear up. Okay, guys. I'm all geared up now. Let's get on down the road. 
even the cows like this bike. Triumph, you did such a wonderful job. It's cow approved. <laughs> Look at these cows. This is hilarious. I have gathered an audience. I parked the bike here. None of the cows were there. Now look, they have all gathered around and said, Hey, look at the cool Triumph Tiger. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. That's on. This is on. Ignition is on. Let's go on down the trail. And here we go. Let's start her up. Oh, yeah. That's that triple sound, that wine. And the cows even love it, see? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. This is uh, very comfortable on the trail. Uh, ergonomically speaking, oh, duck branch. Uh, this is very nice, Triumph. Good job. Uh, uh. I am finding this. I don't have to stand up. <laughs> but, um, if I had to stand up, I'd really have to duck the branches. Uh, but as far as trail riding, good job, Triumph. Even with these uh, th these tires that I could uh, bend over in a corner, this is great. So as far as uh, powertrain, good job, Triumph. Okay, let's talk about chass. Uh, on the trail there, it was good. A thumb up there on the trail. Although this is this is the XR version, so it's more towards the street. And as far as adventure bikes go, in this category, the middleweight adventure, uh, yeah. The performance in a corner, two thumbs up. Good job, Triumph. So the, the brakes, excellent feedback. Excellent feedback. I, I have to give a little more pressure than I would like, but uh, I cannot complain about the feedback. And that's, again, it's an adventure bike. Uh, yeah, I'm two-fingering it, no problem, and it's still enough. Uh, and and the rear brake, oh, there we go, kicked in the ABS a little bit there. <laughs> uh, the engine mapping on this bike is second to none, guys. I good job, Triumph. So ergonomically speaking, no complaints whatsoever, Triumph. Good job. Um, everything is square. The, the handlebars got moved back 10 millimeters. The uh, riding position, I'm straight up. Straight up. Um, and the foot pegs are right underneath your, your seat. Uh, and with the, the uh, seat heights, it doesn't matter how tall you are or how short you are. You can you can uh, increase or decrease that foot peg distance from the seat, no problem. So, two thumbs up on ergonomics. Good job, Triumph. Okay, guys, let's uh, pull over and let's do a conclusion here. Let's stop by the river, my favorite spot here. Careful with the wet leaves. <laughs> Alright guys, after riding this bike all day, it's warmed up, I took my thermals off, it's great. Outside, it's a beautiful day, and it's a beautiful day to be on the new 800 Triumph. I really enjoyed riding this bike on the street. Uh, the performance in the corners was against, if I compare it to the other competition, it was great. Um, just missing the down low torque, that's my only criticism on this bike, is the low down torque. But that's always been the issue with this 675 motor. That's where they took the 800 from. Is, is It's a street motor. So you're going to miss that low down torque. But if you've always liked the triples and you like to wind it up and love to hear that aero exhaust sound, which I do, I do love that, then it's a great bike for you. 
uh, if you if you are a triple fan and if you have the older 800 version yeah say is it worth upgrading hell yes it's worth upgrading to this uh, now I like this bike I didn't the old one I, I shouldn't say I didn't like it I it just I wouldn't buy it uh, it was lackluster although it did great for sales for Triumph from 2010 to now over 68 almost 70,000 sales that's pretty good for the 800 um, but now good job Triumph with the with the 200 um, upgrades or refinements to this uh, to the motor to the sound to the spinning up quicker to the longer first gear to the windscreen to the TFT to all the amenities good job Triumph to the air diffuser um, very good um, if I was looking for a pure adventure bike for pure street I would seriously consider this bike no problem and that's why I'm giving you two thumbs up Triumph two thumbs up um, although if you're used to a parallel twin or the V twin you're gonna miss that down low torque those down low torque numbers and if you're 5 10 15 newton meters torque less in those rpm ranges you feel it I'm just being honest and you guys know I am very critical and if I find a problem I, I, I tell you guys if I, if I like it I tell you guys I like this bike just try and give us more torque down low that's all especially if you're going to call it an adventure bike because uh, when I did take it down the trail and I wanted to grunt 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 I had to wind it up a little higher than I wanted to uh, and so that's my only complaint um, all right guys I hope you've enjoyed the review and as always, guys, ride safe and ride like there's nothing to prove. Cheers.